So we have six new cards here, and we also have information regarding the new difficulty, No Hope, that's coming to Back for Blood in 18 hours from now. So let's very quickly go through these six cards and then talk a little bit about what's going on in No Hope, okay? So, new cards. We have Power Strike here. What Power Strike does is every three seconds, you gain plus 10 bash damage, stacking up to 10 times. All charges are consumed on use. Some things to know about the bash. If you punch something, it does one damage typically, but it has a 40 times stumble multiplier, so you do 40 stumble damage, which is crazy. Now, if you have heavy attack, your one damage goes up to 25 damage, which allows you to take out Ferocious Ridden with a single punch. However, I think it messes with your stumble multiplier, so you're not doing 25 times 40 stumble damage. That'd be disgusting. So, I'm assuming Power Strike is also going to adjust the stumble multiplier side of things, so don't... <laughs> Don't get excited over the idea of being able to punch a tall boy into oblivion over and over again. I don't think it's going to work that way. I think they learned their lesson with Heavy Hitter. <laughs> However, things to keep in mind. That's going to be 101 damage. So that might be really good at smashing through a door that's getting in your way. Heck, after just three stacks of this, you're going to be able to take out any of the Ridden in the game right now with up to Monstrous. I mean, unless No Hope is doing new stuff or new Ridden come out or something like that. 30 HP is the max that's currently in the game. So, just after three stacks, again, it goes up to 10, you're going to be able to take out any Ridden that are in your way. So this might be really nice if you're running for your life or if you're speed running to just blast through stuff rather than pushing it in front of you. Gives you a little bit more of a clearing, okay? But that could also backfire on you too in case you're trying to push things into things. And now onto the next card here, Overprotective. And this is really interesting. So, when, whenever a teammate within 15 meters gains five or more damage... Gain 20% increased damage for 5 seconds. Now, there's nothing on here in terms of a max amount of stacks, or if it can stack, or yada yada. But 5 damage isn't a lot. I mean, really, that's whenever you get hit by almost anything. A regular common's gonna do at least 5 damage to you. Unless you have some sick damage resistance. If you're on Nightmare, 5 damage is nothing. And it's probably going to be even more nothing on No Hope. I mean, uh, we just did testing not that long ago where a monstrous ridden in nightmare mode does 10 damage per hit. So, <laughs> 5 damage is, in my mind, basically whenever you take damage from anything that isn't damage over time. So this, in theory, could be a pretty consistent buff to your damage around your teammates. Also, it's going to be really useful against things like crushers or stalkers. Because if your teammate gets grabbed by one... One of the things you want to do right away is get that thing off of your teammate. And sometimes they can get a little chunky, especially the crushers. So overprotective seems really good. <laughs> like really good. And now onto the card that's been being talked about for a long time, ever since the alarm door change. And that's called Stealthy Passage. It allows the disarming of door alarms, car alarms, and burps. The target will trigger if you're interrupted. So in my mind, what that means is if you're in the middle of disarming a door or disarming a car or disarming the birds, <laughs> It's going to make it so that if you get hit, the horde's going to go off anyway. So be careful. Other things to note, it's going to disable your quick slot, which is pretty spicy of an exchange. But let's also keep in mind that the team effect is gain 25 copper per success. So in my mind, this is it's kind of interesting that this is marked as a blue card because this is totally an economy card or a copper card to me because you are saving a ton on toolkits. Also you are gaining 100 copper for the team anytime you disarm something. So this thing very quickly becomes a pretty potent economy card. The one thing I think about this card that's a little weird is that Carly is on the card even though it disables your quick slot. <laughs> Those two things don't make sense. Okay, on to Pinata. So, killing a Ridden with an accessory has a 15% chance to drop an accessory. So, immediately my mind goes to Hoffman. Hoffman's already doing crazy things with spawning things. I don't know if they're going to fix Hoffman because he's a little busted right now. They might. Yeah, he's spawning at way higher of a rate than 1%, and that's what he's supposed to be spawning items at. So, if he continues his rampage as he has, then Pinata's gonna make him even more crazy. But heck, even if he doesn't, Pinata's making him pretty crazy. Also, keep in mind, you can still spawn things in with Mugger or with, what's the other card? Highwayman. So there's a bunch of opportunities in the game right now that are gonna allow you to spawn more items, which, might be a really big deal come no hope time because oh my god and i'm thinking i'm yeah, thinking more about no hope here no hope is we got details about that but one of the things about no hope is that you're not going to be able to find items in the map just sitting about now you might find supply crates and stuff like that but just random world items they're not going to be there so pinata ooh, pinata can be pretty useful now let's move on to well rested so well rested this is going to provide 25 percent team overheal 
and plus 10% team healing efficiency. Now, overheal. What does overheal mean? <laughs> in my mind, now this is new. We haven't really seen this yet. In my mind, overheal means you reach your max HP. Okay, well, let's go ahead and just give you temporary health now that you've already reached your max HP. So if you can heal for 100, but you have a med kit that heals for 200, then the rest of that is going to go into temporary HP, which is going to help complement bolstered health. Or maybe it would go into the amount of HP you lost due to trauma, but it's definitely gonna affect your bolstered health. If you don't know what bolstered health is, you said in the last video, it's basically an extra tank of HP that you can have that goes beyond your max HP. And this tank can only be filled with temporary health, okay? So that's where I see overheal immediately becoming useful. It's gonna combo up with bolstered health. And then finally here we have Sadist. And what Sadist does is whenever a teammate within 15 meters receives five or more damage, you can gain 20% of that damage as temporary HP. You can only trigger once per second. So, so let me think here. So if you have, I'm trying to get into actual numbers here. If you have a monstrous ridden on Nightmare that does 10 damage, that means you would heal for two temporary HP anytime your teammate takes a hit. And way more than that if somebody gets bonked by a tall boy or something like that. Now, one thing I want to bring everybody together with here is you might be noticing throughout all these cards, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of temporary health changes going on. A lot of health changes going on. Basically, a lot of things that are going to make it so that you can be more alive, less dead, right? So in my mind, what we might also be getting ready for is a series of new things via corruption cards that are going to try to make you more dead, especially in the temporary health department because they're doing a lot to temporary health and they're giving you a lot of different options with it, be it, I mean, I'm assuming overheal works with temporary health, right? Well, I don't know what else that would be. And then bolstered health and then all these other temporary health cards that we're touching, I'd be shocked if they're just making something that's already really overpowered, even more overpowered, they're probably gonna make it so that <laughs> there's a good reason that you're gonna need all this. So we'll see what's going on. Now, speaking of things that are changing and might make it so you need more things, let's talk a little bit about what we know about No Hope. So what we know about No Hope, we have some details that were posted on Reddit via the Total Rock devs. So let's go into that a little bit. One of the things we have here is just a kind of a summary. We talked about this over on the Cleaner's Corner podcast that Mustard was hosting. And the details here are really interesting. So hard to sum it all up. I'll just go ahead and quote Gentleman Squirrel here. Hard to sum it all up, but there's a few changes. Quite a few changes. The biggest change is that players are going to start with their entire deck. Meaning, <laughs> 15 cards right away, 1-1. One, one. So this gets really interesting for so many reasons, frankly. <laughs> but... We'll get a little bit more into that. We also added more random card shrines, which turned out to be a really fun roguelite-like progression. And we also rescaled the ridden power curve. So it's easier at the start of the act, but it gets much harder later. Also, we removed walker, jogger, and runner commons, and we added a new type of common that is faster than sprinters, which is crazy. <laughs> In general, it feels more fair, but mistakes are punished pretty hard. If you come to the mode with a bad deck and little team play, it's going to feel really hard. Harder than Old Nightmare. However, if you come in with a solid teamwork and good decks, it flows pretty well. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into this. Actually, I think I have one more tab up here. What is this tab? Mostly correct. You get more starting cards. No hope. Oh, another one. No hope has less copper piles per map, and all of the copper piles are small, which is what? Going to be the 25 copper variant? Also, we removed all freebie accessories from the world. So, like we were talking about before. Now... <laughs> I know we're going to have a lot to talk about as things come out and as we actually get to see things, but I can probably give you some predictions here right now. So what I take from some of what we are seeing here with 15 cards straight out the gate. One is that it's going to be really interesting if you want to run cards like Headband Magnifier, right? Because usually that's a card you pick at the end of your deck, specifically when you need a lot of use speed at the end of Act 1. Another thing that's going to be really interesting about having 15 cards right away is it completely changes how you pick cards and what cards you would even consider to be pickable. For example, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these cards that maybe we would have never really picked before. So I know Fresh Bandage's stock has been going up and people really love Fresh Bandage lately, but for me, it's always been one of those cards where I just want to pick something else instead of it. But now you're going to have it the whole time. So you're going to get this constant 15 trauma healed every single time you go into a new safe room. 
which could be, which could be a really big deal with the new difficulty. And, but there's a ton of cards that fall under this category where they're nice cards and I really do like them. But I always just have trouble picking them over something else instead. Like Safe Room Recovery is another one that makes me feel the same way. Where I, I think it's a good card, but at the same time, I'd rather pick something else. Also, they might be fixing Safe Room Recovery. I don't know. Currently, it doesn't stack. It, it might start stacking with this patch. We'll see what they end up doing with it. But go through a bunch of these where you feel like, well, I would rather have more damage, or I'd rather have this, or I'd rather have that. But now you can go ahead and open up completely new ways of thinking. Something on the topic of completely new ways of thinking is a card that I don't think people ever really seem to care about is Miraculous Recovery. Now, when you use a medical accessory, it has a 25% chance to have a 100% increased effect. This card suddenly looks a lot more interesting in the context of Overheal. And now that you can have this card right away and you don't have to use an entire round to pick it, it might shoot up a little bit in value. We'll see. Overheal plus bolstered health, Miraculous Recovery might start to make sense. And didn't we also see a card, well, I don't know, the one with Hoffman on it, well, I think it's called Pumped Up, where your temporary health decay is slower, so your temporary health lasts longer. A lot to start thinking about here. Suddenly those first aid kits that heal for 200 HP start to matter a little bit more because before there was a soft cap on healing, right? You can only heal up to your max HP. Well, now if you can overheal, maybe EMT bag is going to make a little bit more sense even though you already have really stonked med kits. Other things to consider, <laughs> in the, especially in the land of no hope, team cards. Things like well-fed. If four people are all going to be playing health cards on your team, you may as well play well-fed. Go ahead and take a peek. Well-fed gives you plus 10 team health, right? But then if you go ahead and take a look at the health cards here, there is a card that does provide 40 HP, but you lose 30% of your stam. So if every single one of you would be playing canned goods anyway, you may as well all just play well-fed together. And there's other cards that go along this same trend. I think what mandatory PT is another one. Plus 10% team stam and team stamina region. That, that's pretty spicy, especially if you have multiple people that are all going to be running stam cards anyway. These are all the different things we start thinking about with these changes that are coming into No Hope, especially with the 15 cards, right? Other things to consider when you're thinking of No Hope and how that's going to change how you think about the game. One of which is speedrunning. I, I'm calling it right now. I am guessing that No Hope is going to be beat within hours of release. There's going to be a dedicated four stack and they're all going to run a crazy speed deck that has explosives and has pockets and has economy in it. And that's just how it's going to be. And if you get a concentrated force of four people working together and each one of them has five pockets of their offensive slot, you're going to be able to run and blow up everything and just cruise through it. That's my guess. I think there's going to be a team that just tries to obliterate no hope in that fashion. Now, if you try to slow play it, it's going to be a completely different game, probably going to be way harder. <laughs> but I do think speedrunning is going to instantly take off in the group setting. Solo speedrun might be hard because we've also heard, I don't know, people keep telling me that they saw this on Reddit or somebody said something in someone's chat that there's going to be roaming bosses. So keep that in mind that if there's bosses all over the place, that could also be really, really interesting, but it is going to mess with the speedrunners, especially the solo ones. Now, if you have a group squad of four, everybody's just going to throw grenades at probably what a breaker. That's literally the only thing that could get in your way. So if everybody just blows up a breaker when you have 20 grenades to work with, I don't see it being a problem. However, one other thing to think about is they said that they increased the amount of spawns of card shrines, did they not? And I think on this tab here, yeah. So what I gather from this is that economy cards are probably going to shoot up in value a little bit because, I mean, not <laughs> economy cards shooting up in value, but the reason why I say that is I think people might also be considering scavenger cards with this no freebies in the map. And I want you to consider things a little bit deeper on that perspective, right? Because if you go and you take a look at copper cards here, right? You can get increased copper, increased copper, increased copper, increased copper. Now, I'm sure there's been a point as you've been playing that you bought Bounty Hunter because you found it in a card shrine. Or you bought Money Grubbers. Or maybe you bought Share the Wealth because you found these cards in the map. You know what card you've never seen in the map? You've never seen any of these scavenger cards. I don't know why that is. I don't know if the game is just designed in a way where if you were to buy a scavenger card mid-level, it would break everything. But never have I ever seen a scavenger card in a card shrine. So that might be reason to go ahead and pick a scavenger card so that you can actually have it for your team. So you can actually spawn things in the level. 
because you're not going to be able to buy it with the increased card shrines. We'll see. But at the same time, maybe not. Maybe you just want to have more copper. Maybe you want to get more out of the copper that you are getting. Because if all the copper piles are going to be small, I mean, maybe Money Grubbers is going to be a little bit more valuable with a copper scav team. Because you're going to try to make the most of what you got. So there's a bunch of different things to be considering here. Also, we don't even know if the cards like Share the Wealth or Hazard Pay are going to proc in dungeons. Because we've seen a, what, what do you call it, a vendor there, but we don't know if that's considered a safe room. If that's the case, then any safe room card is going to become really valuable. Safe room recovery or fresh bandage or what? Share the wealth. But let's say they don't. Does that mean cards like Bounty Hunter are going to become more valuable? Because they're still going to go ahead and be ridden in those dungeons. But is there going to be a safe room mechanic? We don't know. All things to be considering. And now one more thing I would like you to consider when we're talking about no hope. I want you to take a look at the written values here. This is going to be something really interesting to consider. So, the way the game works currently is you start off weak and you become much stronger. So, in a lot of cases, the beginning of an act can feel harder than the end of an act. Now, from what we were just told about No Hope, that's going to be flipped around. The beginning is going to be easier than the end. Okay? Now, let's talk about why that is and maybe <laughs> help you try to conceptualize how it was designed. So, if you take a look at written here, on Nightmare. What you'll notice is that they gain HP based off of them being standard, ferocious, or monstrous. And then standard are the mutations you see at the beginning of an act. Ferocious are the ones you see kind of in the middle, but sometimes sprinkled in the beginning. And then monstrous are the ones you see at the end. Okay? So, to give you an easy idea of how this works, I'm sure you've, if you've ever went ahead and took a look at any of the corruption cards, it tells you straight out. But if we go ahead and we take a look at a monstrous bruiser here, we'll see what? 1532 HP? If you divide that by standard, so a monstrous versus a standard bruiser. What you'll see is that this actually turns out to be about a 50% increase in HP. So, that's a pretty decent chunk of health, right? But it's not. This is why it's not a big deal. Because if you go ahead and you take a look at your weapons, and this is part of the reason in my mind why we were able to complete no card nightmare because of what I'm about to show you. So, if you take a look at pretty much any of your weapons in the game. Let's go ahead and take a look at a Scar. A lot of people really like to use the Scar, right? Scar at the Gray Variant starts at 15 damage, right? Well, by the time you reach a Purple, which is about when the monsters show up, Purple and monsters tend to kind of coincide with each other, right? At that point, your gun's doing 25 damage per bullet. So, let's go ahead and do the same thing that we just did with the HP. So, 25 divided by 15. What you'll see is that you're getting a 66% damage boost off of your weapon, which very easy to figure out, that's more than 50. <laughs> so you outscale the Ridden just by picking up higher color weapons, okay? Literally just your weapons and you'll be able to keep up with the Ridden. On top of the fact, which again, this should be pretty straightforward and you should see where this is going. On top of the fact that when you have your cards, you start getting huge boosts in power. Hyperfocus gives you 50% weak spot damage. Patient Hunter gives you, what, 30% damage. Confident Killer here can give you 15% damage. There are so many different things that are affecting your damage. We have Reckless Strategy here with a 30%. We have things like Cocky and Guns Out that help you increase your DPS because you spend less time swapping or Reload Speed to increase your DPS. And we, this, again, it doesn't stop. We have Shredder. We have Marked for Death. That's just a huge team buff. We have Glass Cannon. We also have things to make you faster so you can run away from these creatures even though they're not getting any faster. The, mu the common might, but the mutations aren't. So you keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and you're already stronger than them anyway just because of your weapon. So, all that in mind, no hope is scaled around the idea that it's supposed to be harder than Nightmare. Okay? It's supposed to be harder than Nightmare even though you have 15 cards out the gate. Meaning... <laughs> there's a good chance it might be pretty tough. And I think that's exciting. Okay? And now you understand a little bit more about why the game works the way it does. Anywho, I was not anticipating to talk this long about all these different things, but there's a lot of, lot of different things we talked about. So, I'm going to end it here because it comes out in soon, and I want to stream tonight. 
So I'm going to get this video out. We stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Links in the description, also the top comment. If you found this video helpful or you want to see other videos that we're covering about this stuff or anything that's been helpful in the past, please consider subscribing down below. And if you want to support the channel just a little bit more, please consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking the join button. It costs about a dollar a month and you support the stream directly, support me directly, and you support this content. So thank you guys. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.